Hello my friends, in today's video I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about converters, what they are and how to use them. And I decided to split this video up into a part A and a part B, so part A I'm just going to explain what they are, and in part B I'm going to go over an experiment that I did that reveals just how much the converters actually affect the sound quality. And I did the experiment in a way that exaggerates the effect so you can really hear what's going on. So if you want to hear what converters do to the audio signal, check out the next video. This video, I'm just going to explain what the converters are. So as we learned in lesson three, analog sound in the form of an electrical current is fluctuations of voltage. And it's those fluctuations of voltage that gets transferred through the audio cables and from one piece of gear to another. And those fluctuations of voltage go into the speaker and get translated into sound. But a computer reads binary code. It only reads zeros and ones. So those fluctuations of voltage need to get converted into zeros and ones, and that's what the audio converters do. Also called ADDA conversion, which stands for analog to digital, digital to analog conversion. So the role of the converters is to take this analog signal and convert it to digital. So fluctuations of voltage get converted to zeros and ones, which can be interpreted by the algorithm in the computer. And then the digital to analog conversion takes the zeros and ones, the binary code from the computer, and converts that into the fluctuations of voltage that represent the analog sound. So when you plug your microphone or your guitar into your audio interface, the audio interface automatically converts it into zeros and ones and sends it into your computer. But this conversion process, even though it kind of happens behind the scenes and you don't notice it, it is an important step. This is the step where the bit depth and sample rate are determined. So generally, with modern recording equipment, we record at a bit depth of 24 bits. And the sample rate varies. Usually it's either 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. And that's called one time sample rate, also called 1FS. Or you could record at 2FS or two times sample rate, which would be 88.2 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz. And if you don't understand what bit depth and sample rate are, then you need to revisit lesson four where I explain that. So within an ADDA converter circuit, there's three main components that I'm going to talk about. So first off, there's the analog circuit, and then there's the actual conversion circuit itself, and then there's the word clock. So the analog circuit, on the analog to digital side, the audio coming in has to first go through some analog circuits before it actually gets converted. So the analog circuits could be transformer, could be a gain stage, and the quality of these components will of course affect the sound. And also on the digital to analog side, so after it gets converted from the zeros and ones to voltage fluctuations, it's a very weak signal and it needs to get boosted before it becomes line level. And so that boost happens from a gain stage, and the quality of that gain stage is an important factor because you want as little noise as possible and as much accuracy as possible. So next is the actual conversion process itself. It senses what the voltage is and it takes little snapshots at whatever the sample rate is and creates a number that represents that specific value. Or on the way out on the digital to analog, it receives the number in binary code that represents a specific value and it creates a voltage that represents that value. And it does this thousands of times per second at whatever your sample rate is. And the last component is the word clock. Remember I was just mentioning it takes these snapshots at like thousands of times per second. Well, that needs to be regulated and it needs to be regulated very precisely. So the word clock is the clock source that regulates the timing of those snapshots. So those snapshots, they need to be synchronized perfectly between your audio interface, any external audio converters that you're using, as well as your DAW. Everything has to be lined up perfect. Otherwise, you'll get pops and clicks in the audio. All right, I'm going to give you just a really quick demonstration of hooking up a converter unit into an audio interface. Right here, I have an eight channel analog to digital, digital to analog converter. This is the Behringer ADA8200. Actually a really high quality device and it's quite inexpensive. What this does is it has eight channels. You can see them on the front panel and these are eight preamps. So I've got my gain knob for each preamp and I've got my XLR input for each microphone input. And what this unit does is it accepts the microphone inputs eight at a time and will convert them to a digital audio signal. And then that digital audio signal gets routed to the recording interface. So this outputs the digital audio signal through an ADAT cable. Now, it's actually not called an ADAT cable, it's called a Toslink cable, which is an optical cable. So the digital information is not flowing through copper wires, it is not prone to interference or any of the typical things that plague audio. It's just going through the optical cable. Here's what the optical cable looks like. 
And underneath it right here, I have an audio recording interface. This is the Digidesign 003 rack. These are pretty much outdated and you can pick them up for dirt cheap and do fantastic recordings with them still. Now on the back of both of these interfaces, we have our connections. So the way I would connect this converter unit into the interface is with this toss link cable, this optical toss link cable. So now because the digital audio is going out from the converter and in to the interface, I'm going to use the output port from the converter. So there's two ports here in and out because this can also convert digital audio into analog audio. So this is both an AD converter and a DA converter. But for the analog to digital converter, if I want to use the preamps and send those microphone signals into the audio interface, this converts it to digital, sends that digital information out from the output port. Here it is right there. So I'm going to connect this cable into the output port, click. And I'm going to connect it into the optical input port on the back of the 003 rack. And there we go. Boom. Just like that. Now it's going to send its digital information into the Digidesign 003 interface. However, like I just said a minute ago, you need to synchronize the word clock. So right here, I have a word clock cable. This is called a 75 ohm BNC connector. And I need to connect it from the word clock output on the back of the interface. So word clock out. Connected there and word clock in connected there. There we go. So now this interface is being used as the master clock and it's sending that clock signal into the converter which is being used as a slave clock. Now this is all hooked up and it's nice and all. There's one more thing on the back of the converter. There's a little switch here for synchronizing and this switch needs to be selected for word clock in because there's several different ways that I can synchronize the word clock with this unit. I can synchronize it through word clock or I can flip the switch and synchronize it through ADAT. However, word clock, when it's flowing over an ADAT connection, when the word clock is being passed through a toss link cable, the optical cable, it only flows in the same direction as the audio. So because I'm sending audio from here, from the converter into the interface, if I want to send word clock through the optical cable, then I have to use the converter as the master and then send the word clock information from the converter into the interface and use the interface as the slave clock. So slave the interface clock off of the internal clock that's built into this converter. And if I wanted to do that, then I would have to switch this little switch here to select my sample rate. So the other two selections on this switch are 48 kilohertz and 44.1 kilohertz. So if I put this switch to, let's just say 44.1, then this converter is going to use its internal clock and send the clocking information down the ADAT cable and into the interface. And to synchronize them, I would have to go into the software for this interface and select the clocking source as external clock over ADAT. The other option would be to select external clock over word clock, which would take the clocking source as the word clock input right here. However, it won't work in this instance because this converter does not have a word clock output. See, it has a word clock input, but it does not have a 75 ohm BNC connector for word clock output. So the only way to output word clock from this device is through ADAT. I hope that wasn't too confusing. I'm just going to go over this again really quickly in case I made things con more confusing than they need to be. So for this to work right here, right now with this setup, I need to switch this switch to word clock input. And then this converter unit is going to receive word clock over this 75 ohm BNC connector. I need to plug this cable into the word clock output from the interface which is just always sending the word clock output. I don't need to do anything in the software to tell it to send the word clock out. It just does it automatically. So the word clock is automatically going out this cable and into here, and this converter will automatically synchronize to the word clock signal coming through this cable. Now the eight microphones that I can plug into this front panel unit are being converted to digital audio 
and they're being sent down the optical toss link cable right here. So I plug that into the output and into the input, into the ADAT input of the interface. So with this connected, the interface is going to be able to receive eight more channels of audio. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, hit the like button there for me. Also, subscribe to this channel because I've got tons more videos coming. I'm uploading an entire audio engineering course from scratch. I want to teach you everything you need to know to run a studio. That's it for this video. I'm going to move on now and film part B where I get into audio quality of the converters. So check it out.